Hello everyone. Now, this episode of Cookies Enabled is going to be one of my all-time favorites for sure. We're talking about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Wasp, Downsizing, and so many more movies are going to be addressed and the myths behind them. So stick around and let's learn something new together. Okay, let's jump right into this one. The movies, what we're talking about in this case, are going to be Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, um, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, uh, Downsizing, and uh, Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Wasp. Those are the main ones we're talking about. Where, uh, and what they are referencing science-wise is the fact that if you look at the atomic scale, or if you look at an atom, atoms have two stages. They have the nuclei, which is the center, that actually has the mass of the atom, and then you have the electron wall, which is a distance away, and that wall of electrons is constantly moving and fluctuating. So, if you could shrink the distance between the electron wall and the nuclei is what you're doing in the movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And in the movie Honey, I Blew Up the Kids and Ant-Man and Wasp, where they're getting really, really big instead of really, really small, you're increasing the density of space between the nuclei and the electron wall. So, is this possible? Do we really have the ability to do this? I'm going to cover that here a little bit later. Let's stick with the movies and see where those movies take us. Is it really possible? Um, well, let's discuss this nuclei thing a little bit more. If we were to increase the size of an atomic nuclei to a peanut, that would actually mean the electron wall would be as far away as a stadium. If we were standing in the center of a, of a baseball stadium, the surrounding walls of the building, would, of the stadium, would actually be the electron wall. If we increase the nuclei of every atom on the planet to the size of a peanut. That's how much empty space would be in between the electron wall and the, the peanut. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of space. And so that's what they're talking about in these movies, is that we're actually kind of, everything is made up of a lot of nothing. There's just a lot of vast emptiness in between our fingers and matter and everything that combines everything you see here in the background. A lot of it's just not even there, really. And so that's what they're talking about in these movies. If you could shrink all that empty space out of there, everything would get a lot smaller. And they are true. This is correct. And if you could increase the space between the nuclei and the electron wall, things would get bigger. That is correct. The, the, the science there is technically sound, and that's as far as it gets with these movies. Now let's break down three more myths that really dive into what's going on, and we're going to experience uh, time displacement again, which we've mentioned in other article or other um, uh, segments here on Cookies Enabled. So let's stick around and let's learn more together, guys. Okay, so where do these movies get it wrong? We're going to break down three different kind of examples of what's really happening here and how this would not work out the movie the way the movies explain. So, number one is that obviously time is relative. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our Time Travel Explained episode, which I released in Season 1. It's really great. It really breaks down a lot of this whole multiverse theory thing. Um, as well as time travel, future and reverse, all that stuff. So take a look at that. But keep in mind that time is relative to you and to everything else. So if you get smaller, time gets slower. Your metabolic rate would increase because you are getting smaller and you're becoming like mouse ant size so the smaller you get the faster your met metabolic rate goes and thus the slower time seems to move for you that means that a day which used to feel like 24 hours now feels like 36 hours or 72 hours or 96 hours the smaller you get the longer that day is going to feel and that is just pure relative science because of how big and uh, you are relative to the rest of the world and time movement. So, number one, time changes if you get bigger or smaller. The bigger you get, obviously the faster time goes. The day would go so much faster. You are running out of time because it seems like you're running and moving in slow motion because you're so gigantic. But again, if you're really small, you're moving really, really, really fast. But time's moving so slow, it's like you're not going anywhere. 
you have such a longer distance to go because you're so much smaller. And that's kind of where Ant-Man gets it wrong. You see the cars shrinking down and then zipping past some of these other cars. But really, they just shrink in size. Now they'd have to be going like 300 miles an hour to pass somebody going normal size at 80. I'm sorry, it's super cool to watch. I'm not dissing on the movies themselves, just the science behind them is so sci-fi. I have to break down where the science just ends. And so, that's one of the main ones. So, the second one, if shrinking were possible, all that empty space that you're removing is weightless. It's empty. There is no mass being removed. What does that mean? That means the weight of whatever you shrunk stays the same no matter what size it is. Because all you did, again, was remove or make that electron wall get closer to the nuclei of the atom. And that is all you did. You didn't actually remove any of the nuclei that existed in the first place. That would be reducing the mass, thus reducing the weight of whatever it is. So... In Ant-Man, when they shrink a building and then they start wheeling it away, this is not possible. Yes, you might be able to shrink that building and remove all that empty space that's in that building, but it still has the weight of the building. It would be millions of pounds. You would not be able to just wheel it away. Same thing goes for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. When they shrink the kids down accidentally and the kids are carried away by an ant first of all just one of those kids climbing on top of the ant would have crushed the ant right there because the kid itself still weighs as much as it did it would be the same thing as the kid just stemping on the ant when he's normal size same thing so the parents wouldn't have been able to just scoop him up in a spoon that spoon would have bent it would not have been able to hold the kid it wouldn't have been able to do any of the things that it says they're doing um, and that's kind of where Ant-Man gets things right. You see this in the kitchen scene in Ant-Man and Wasp, where Wasp gets shrunk down and she's like kicking things through the air and kicking soup and things and they're flying around. That's actually realistic because you would actually be able to do that. But leads us into problem number three, which is that if you're getting giant size, you're not gaining superpowers at the same time. What do I mean by that? That means that when you get, if you were to get blown up, if you were to add more space between the nuclei of the atom and the electron wall and make everything bigger, that's great. But again, you didn't actually add more mass. So it still weighs the same as it did before. So if it was a 100 pound weight and you made it look like the size of a 200 pound weight, it doesn't actually weigh the same as that 200 pound weight. It just looks like it does, and it would still weigh as much as 100 pounds, even though it's twice the size as it should be. You're just increasing more vacuum or emptiness between all of the molecules, atoms, and walls, and yada yada, as I've described before. So, this whole picking things up, because I'm giant, I can pick up that car, I can move that airplane would not be able to do any of those things. Again, you don't gain superpowers. You didn't just gain hundreds of pounds of muscle and like pick up buildings and cars and stuff, you know, like Godzilla or, or King Kong. Unfortunately, that isn't what's happening here. And, and it wouldn't, wouldn't work that way. In fact, you'd be incredibly weak if you were gigantic sized. Everything would feel extra heavy. It would take so much more energy because again your metabolism is now really slow so everything is going to go really fast so all of us tiny people would be moving around really 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 quickly and you're like moving in slow motion and it's going to take all the kind of energy you have just to sustain that kind of giantness uh, you'd have to be eating pretty much constantly and sleeping everywhere in between so it just doesn't really work again Time constraints relative to what you're dealing with kind of jumps back to number one. So one, time, two, weight, and three, the things that you'd have to be able to do that they're showing you in these movies would be completely impossible without superpowers. So again, sorry everybody. I love these movies, but they're not realistic. Okay, another example I want to give here is uh, let's say I take a balloon or a beach ball and I 
try to, again, let's say that beach ball, you know, is 20, 10 pounds. I'm going to remove all the air from that beach ball. How much does it weigh now? Does it still weigh 10 pounds? And the answer is yes. It might weigh just a fraction of a bit less because, again, I removed all that air that was in there, but it still pretty much weighs 10 pounds. It might be, again, like a hundredth of a, a, a decimal place off or something on the scale, like 9.9998 pounds or something. But it's still going to pretty much weigh exactly the same. And same goes for blowing things up. If you take that beach ball, which is empty, and I blow it up to a big beach ball. Now it's giant, absolutely, but it doesn't weigh any different. It didn't, it's not stronger. I'm not able to like punch a hole through my wall because I hit it super hard or anything like that. We know that for a fact. It wouldn't matter if the ball was made out of metal or plastic rubber. It's not going to make a difference. So keep that in mind. But let's explain where the science might come in handy in the future and how something like this might actually be possible. Okay, is this totally sci-fi? Are we just like every time a, a shrinking or expanding movie comes out, am I just supposed to completely ignore everything that happens in it? No. <laughs> and here's why. There's a lot of science that does get crammed into those movies, especially in the Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Wasp series. They really break down like the quantum mechanics behind being on different levels of space and time. Again, they don't knock it out of the park 100%, but it wouldn't be a superhero movie if they did. So that's why they had to kind of stretch the limits of physics. And same thing goes for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. It wouldn't be a fun movie if you blew the kid up, you know, to a three-story building and he couldn't pick up a car or anything like that. You know, they just it wouldn't be fun. You know, if the parent could still pick him up would be kind of funny. But that would be pretty much the extent of the movie. And so that's that's really what we're seeing is just that they're over-exaggerating reality, you know. And the fact that things get bigger, we just automatically assume they weigh more because that's reality. So, uh, again, they're not totally wrong. And until our scientists really at the Large Hadron Collider, they're the ones doing the majority of the research on particle physics. And that's really the science that we're talking about here. Until they can really get a better understanding of quantum mechanics um, and uh, subatomic particles, how they interact with our world uh, and how they all work together, which they're really close and give them another 10, 20 years. I'm sure we'll have a lot more answers. Um, I know uh, Back to the Future also kind of knocks it out of the park with uh, the pizza. If you In Back to the Future 2, they get this little tiny pizza from Pizza Hut and she puts it into a machine. She rehydrates the pizza in a matter of seconds. Then the thing comes out full-size pizza ready to be eaten uh, and consumed. Uh, again, <laughs> we're, we're past that date in the movie and we still don't have technology like that. And uh, again, I don't think that's necessarily a shrinking or expanding kind of technology, but who knows? I mean, it was, again, the artists did what they wanted to do, uh, and they just kind of applied math and science as they went in the movie instead of digging out their physics book. And again, it wouldn't be as fun to enjoy, so definitely check out those movies if you haven't. But unfortunately, the science isn't 100%. It's maybe about 10% realistic is actually what you're seeing in those movies. So unfortunately, everybody, those myths didn't add up to much here in this episode. But hopefully we all learned something new. I know I did. And thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. I will see you guys all next time. Have a great one, everybody. Oh, 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 oh,